for each of the following functions, find the domain. And we're asked here specifically to write our domain using interval notation. So looking at these two beautiful functions here, f and g, we can see that they're both rational functions. So let's make a little love note here about rational functions or fraction functions. We want to think to ourselves, where do rational functions not exist? Well, we know that rational functions do not exist if their denominator is equal to zero. So if their bottom, their denominator, is equal to zero. So we want to make sure that we are preventing zero in the denominator of both of these functions. So let's think about function a, or part a here. <laughs> we have the function f of x is equal to x squared all divided by x plus 4. So we know to, in order to find this domain that we need to set the denominator not equal to 0 and solve for x. We want to prevent the x values here that are going to make our denominator 0. So I have x plus 4 cannot be equal to 0. And if we go ahead here and subtract 4 from both sides of the equation, we can see 4 minus 4, they cancel each other out. And this lets us know that x cannot be equal to negative 4. So we're ready to make a conclusion about this domain. We can conclude that therefore x can be any real number, our little heart's desire. So any real number except negative 4. So if you see what that interval notation is, by all means, go for it. Otherwise, let's take a moment and think about this on a number line. So here is the x-axis. And we'll say right there is where negative 4 exists. Now we know if we move to the right-hand side of negative 4, we're moving to the positive x value. So you're growing infinitely large. Versus when we move to the left-hand side of negative 4, you're moving towards the negative values. We put a minus infinity there. Now thinking about our algebra above, we know that x could be any real number except negative 4. So you want to take your hole punch and remove that point, negative 4, from the number line. Now again, x can be anything else. So x could be anything greater than negative 4, approaching positive infinity, or anything less than negative 4, approaching negative infinity. So from this number line, we're ready to make the conclusion for our interval notation. We can say that, therefore, x is an element of the interval from negative infinity to negative 4. And now because we're excluding negative 4, we do that rounded parentheses. And then x could be anything greater than negative 4 and approaching positive infinity. Now notice how we have two separate intervals here, so we want to unite them with our union. And so this is our beautiful final answer for part A. And so we're ready now to move on to our second function, part B. And in part B, we are given the function g of x is equal to x minus 7 all divided by x squared minus 49. Now again, we are working with a rational function. So in order to find the domain, we want to set the denominator, or that bottom, not equal to zero, and we'll solve for x. So here we go, our denominator in this case is x squared minus 49 cannot be equal to zero. Now look at this expression we have here x squared minus 49. We recognize 49 as a perfect square. This is 7 squared. So we have a difference of squares here. We can factor. This is equivalent to saying that x minus 7 multiplied by x plus 7 cannot be equal to 0. So we need to think about two separate cases here. We need to think about the case where x minus 7 cannot be equal to 0 and the case where x plus 7 cannot be equal to 0. 
So in case number one, to isolate x, we're going to add 7 to both sides of this equation. So these 7s cancel themselves out to 0, and we're left here with x cannot be equal to positive 7. Now, case number 2, to isolate x, this time we need to subtract 7 from both sides. So 7 minus 7 cancels itself out to 0, leaving us with x cannot be equal to negative 7. So what are we observing here? Well, we're observing that x can be any real number our little hearts desire except plus or minus 7. So again, if you see this interval notation, by all means, go for it. Otherwise, you can think about the x-axis or an x-number line. So we have a beautiful x-number line here, and we want to think about the points negative 7 and positive 7. And again, we know that x could be any real number except for these two x values. So we're taking our hole punch and we are removing those two points from the number line. We are excluding negative 7 and positive 7. So we can see just from looking at this number line, x could be anything less than negative 7. It could be anything in between negative 7 and positive 7. Or x could be anything greater than positive 7. And as always, if it helps, include those infinities on the left and right hand sides. So by drawing this number line out, we can really appreciate these intervals. We can see we have one, two, three intervals here. We have the interval from negative infinity to negative seven. We have the interval from negative seven to positive seven. And last but not least, we have the interval from positive seven to positive infinity. So x can be any real number in these three intervals. And because we have three separate intervals here, again, we unite them with our union. And so this is our beautiful final answer here for the domain of function g of x.